You're very welcome everyone to today's webinar. Today we're going to talk about um, Circus and uh, particularly around collaboration and scheduling. So we have new, some new features in those areas um, that we'd like to take a look at. Uh, and also um, we'll do a, a quick walkthrough of the platform if, if you're not familiar with it. We'll also talk a bit about some of the features we're developing for integration with Farmer's Wife which is our, our sister platform and some of the roadmap um, that we have for the product. So um, if you do have any questions, this part of the webinar is recorded, but if you do have any questions, uh, please post them in the chat on the webinar and we can answer those at the end live. Um, so my name is Michelle, I'm the product manager for Circus. I've been working across different roles in, in IT for about 15 years and I've been with Circus and Farmer's Wife for three years and I'm based in Palma in Spain. And our facilitator today is Joanna. Joanna has been working for over seven years in video production and has been with us in Farmer's Wife and Circus for two and a half years. And Joanna is based in Poland. Um, so as I said at the end, Joanna will, will um, go through your questions and we'll have a, a chat at the end about any questions and, and responses that we have. A bit of background about Circus. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Farmer's Wife and may be joining the webinar today um, because you have some connection or experience with Farmer's Wife. Um, so Circus is, is developed by the same team as developed Farmer's Wife uh, and it came out of, uh, I guess, the need, we understood a need um, for a different kind of collaboration. So through Farmer's Wife, we knew a lot about um, resource management and project management and financial management. And, you know, we, we did understand that there was some gap there around collaboration. So Circus was, a, I guess, a different tool that was built ground up um, by the same team and by um, members of that team uh, around collaboration. So initially we, we partnered with a, uh, a team to uh, work on collaboration. So a lot of the initial development was around task management and collaboration. Uh, and now in, in recent times, we've been working more on project management, um, project templates, and also around uh, resource scheduling. Um, and that kind of timeline view. We've also done some more work this year on integration between our two products, and I'll cover a little bit later um, how that works now and what we plan to do in the future. And we may have a separate webinar coming up, I think Joanna related to um, Farmer's Wife and Circus integration and the workflows that that can support now and the workflows we plan to support in the future. Um, also, if you did want more detail, today I'll, I'll take a short tour of the product, but if you did want more detail on specific areas, we have tutorials on circus.com on the website, and there's also um, a recording of a previous webinar from during the year, which is a little bit more detailed in, in some of the areas. So as I said, today we'll do a, a short tour of the platform just to give you an idea of how things work. If you're familiar with Circus, you might still learn some hints and tips. We'll also look in detail at some of the collaboration you can do around comments and file management. And we'll look at some of the latest developments in, in scheduling and our latest feature around uh, advanced search. Um, also, just looking ahead to what we have coming up later in the year. Uh, and at the end, as I said, we'll do a, um, a Q&A, so post your questions as they come up. So jumping over to the product, uh, I will show the Mac app today. Uh, although we have, um, in Circus, we have a Mac app, an iOS app, uh, both on the App Store, and we also have a web version at circus.com. We have an Android app, which is in beta on the Play Store, if you have some Android users. Uh, so I'm logged in here to a test environment. I'm logged in here as Jim. You can see at the bottom here that I'm Jim. And this is a list of Jim's tasks. Uh, these are sorted by due date, so it's easy to see which ones are coming up, which ones are overdue or due today, and then you can see a list of, of the rest of them by due date. Um, so this is one way of working on the task list. Um, the, the filters and the sorting are here at the bottom. Um, I also have some tasks that are starred, so they get pinned to the top of my, my task list. Um, so let's have a look at one of those. So this task, um, here I have my list and here I have my inspector. So you'll see this structure um, in a number of places where we have the navigation here, the content in the middle and the inspector of this item um, over on the right. So here in this task, you can see the history of everything that's happened in this task. You can also see some discussion here. So um, we had some to and fro discussing a candidate with Anna and her reply, uh, some emoji reactions here. Um, so this is something that we added during the year, these reactions to comments. Um, and you can see how we can collaborate um, in a simple way on this task. You can also attach files to tasks. So here I have a file 
of this candidate attached to the task. I'll just show you quickly how that works. Um, I can also attach files, uh, sorry, uh, I can also attach files um, uh, to the comment here. So if I navigate here, I can attach resume directly and I can say, A new feature that we've added is this ability to mention all the people on the task. Uh, here I'm in a, a personal task, which is not in a project, but if I was in a project, I would also get suggestions to mention all the people in the project or all the people in the workspace. Um, so there you go. I get a little preview. This is a PDF, so I get a preview um, and I can download or preview the task from there. An interesting uh, little shortcut is that you can also paste from your buffer. So I can do a, a screenshot here and say, just paste directly in from my buffer, a little image. Um, so you can see that it's, it's quite fast to collaborate on this task and to pass information back and over. Because I've mentioned all on the task here, um, I can click on this to see who that is. It's me and Anna and Jody. Uh, so Anna and Jody will be will receive an inbox notification for this mention. We'll also receive a push notification on Mac and iOS if that's configured, and also an email notification if that's what they have set up. All of that is is configurable in in your notifications here. Notifications. Um, so back to my task. Uh, other things you can do with comments. If I mention somebody, uh, I also have the option to set that conversation as private. So once I mention somebody, one or more people, um, I can set that to private. So at the moment, anyone who can see this task can see all of these comments. But if I wanted to have a private conversation just to maybe uh, remind Anna to take a look at this task, but not to clog up the collaboration with that, I can set that as, as private. Uh, I can also mention roles here. So we have this idea of um, uh, individuals having roles and I could mention a role there and make it private for that role so only people with that role could see that task so or could see that comment so I can send this over to Anna and now if Jody, the other person on this task is looking at this task she won't see this entry um, Anna can reply to me and that's also private so a nice little way to um, I guess keep down the noise uh, it's some of the collaboration is these these private comments um, this task has a uh, a due date but it isn't part of a project um, so this task kind of exists on its own when I start working on the task uh, I can mark the task in progress when I'm working on it and a nice uh, feature is to edit this status to say exactly for example on hold it's quite useful to say why it's on hold um, say pending interview I can Type that text there and then that will be pinned here on the task so people know why this task is on hold and all of these this information when I made the status changes are, are in the history of the task here. Um, so this is a personal task, uh, it's not in a project, it's just a, a to-do I guess between a group of us. I could just have it assigned to me or have it assigned to a role like this, this task here which is a recurring task monthly to, to remind us to, to pay some invoices. But if I jump over to this projects menu item, um, you can see that I can organize my work in projects. So here's a list of all of my projects. Um, some of those projects have start and end dates, which means I can switch over to this schedule view and see um, a list uh, of all of the projects that are scheduled. So this is similar navigation to what I have in the schedule. I can left arrow, command left arrow and right arrow. I can uh, zoom in and zoom out with keyboard shortcuts, command plus and minus. Um, and I can double click and go into the project. So either from this schedule or from the view, I can double click and go into the project. Um, so the project has some information associated with it. This project doesn't have a template, but I can save this project as a template here. Um, it has a start and end date. It can have a due date, a status, a color. Um, Projects, you can also collaborate with comments and files at project level. So here I can mention everyone in the workspace or the project and I can say and everybody in the, the project will be notified about that. Um, they'll get a notification like, like this one that there's a new this is this is Jim's inbox. They'll get a notification here and also push notifications for that. Um, so going back to my project, sorry. 
Um, I can also have files at a project level. Projects have members with different permissions. So I'm an administrator in this project. Uh, other people can be members. And we also have a level below that, which is a limited member. And those members can only see tasks that are assigned to them. So quite useful for kind of guests uh, on your project. In projects, you can also have roles. So you see we have these various roles. So I can assign a task or I can mention um, somebody in this role or, or a number of people in this role, like the designer contains both of these people and the task is assigned to both of them or the mention is sent to both of them. So um, it's a way to manage, I guess, work across the team uh, if you don't want to assign it to individuals. We also have sub projects and sub projects can have start and end dates and colors and statuses and comments and files of their own, just like the top project level. Um, and then the, the, the meat of the project, these are my tasks and some of the tasks exist at the top level, some of, are in, some of them are in sub-projects um, and they can, some of them are assigned to people and to roles or to only roles like this one um, and you can see how the project is progressing. There's also a little progress indicator here at the top for the project to see how it's progressing. Um, uh, also, I have can have bookings on the project and those bookings will be shown in this schedule tab. So here, for example, this is a booking. I can create a new booking, uh, a new, uh, sorry, at the top here are my, my, if I just zoom out a little bit, you see these are my um, sub projects here. And then below I have my bookings and my tasks. So this is something new. This, this here is a booking. It's associated with this project and it has uh, people involved and they have um, different events, um, people, people and resources. But I can also uh, schedule tasks. So for example, this one, updating styling, uh, this task has a, a start date and an end date added to it. And the feature that we've been working on is to then book that time out in the schedule. So if I go back and take another example, um, I say my project plan, my uh, sitemap design, I can add a start and end date to this sitemap design of let's say Wednesday. And then it will show Thursday. And when I go back to my schedule, here is my sitemap design. Um, and then the task is kind of booked against those people. So, uh, I guess a good question is when would you use tasks and when would you use bookings? Uh, book Tasks are very simple in some perspectives. I mean, tasks have statuses and all kinds of things, but in the booking perspective, they're kind of simple. They have a start and end. They have assignees. Um, tasks can only have people assignees or roles, um, whereas bookings can have resources, uh, like, like this example, can have resources and can have um, uh people as well. So people and non-people resources like this example booking. Uh, also, you can see here that on this single booking, Claire is booked for a number of, of days, um, but it's not sequential. So there's four events here for Claire on the 14th, 16th and the 18th. Um, so I guess it's a different way uh, to manage more complex booking requirements. So you might want to use bookings if you need to split out your bookings in this way, or if you need to um, schedule non non-people resources. So everything I'm seeing in this schedule are bookings that are linked to this project. Um, if I want to see the overview for all of the team, uh, I, I jump out to the schedule view. So we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. This is the overview of all projects. So we'll look at that um, in a second. I just wanted to quickly show you back on projects. Um, projects can also be created from uh, a template. So when I create my project, uh, sorry, I just select my, I can have a project which is online trade show and I can select a template for that uh, and that template will give me some custom fields, will give me the tasks, the sub projects, all of that structure um, that I need and I can also add people in the template or I can have them optional here. Um, so this is... And these fields that I have here, um, these happen to be entry fields, but they could be drop downs or selectors. Um, all of these custom fields that I have in the project templates, you can add those to tasks, projects, and bookings. Um, and all of the collaboration I showed with the files and the comments and the private comments and all of that is available on, on tasks and projects and bookings. 
Um, so let's create that new project. Here it is. Uh, it gets a default color and a default uh, avatar from the... And when I go to the uh, sub-projects, this, this list of sub-projects is created by default and these tasks are created by default and then I can go and assign out in, in this example, the template didn't have people assigned to the roles, but I can go back here and say that in this workspace, in this project, Anna will be the admin and therefore she will be assigned the tasks or I could assign them directly. Um, so that's how to easily get up and running um, with a new project using project templates. Uh, all of the templates are configured here in the workspace. So here in the templates, in project templates, um, this is the one that we use, the new trade show click into it and you see it has the same structure as a project where I can add the fields and the members and the tasks. Um, other template types, we also have task templates and booking templates where you can configure um, how tasks of certain types will be assigned and the custom fields and the rules associated with that. Uh, so for example I have a bug report one template here and I also have these um, media type templates as well. Uh, so if I go back to my project um, where we were looking, my website project, this did have some tasks which had that bug report template. So you see they have these custom fields and when the task is created uh, it's assigned to a developer by default I believe. Um, so that's kind of task templates. This is a really simple one, but there are more complex ones. Um, a good use of task templates or a possible use is to make uh, them available as requests. So this means that you're kind of uh, forcing people to create a task in a certain way. So this request menu is like a portal. Uh, and for example, the bug template one, if I select this bug report here, um, it will assign the task by default to web development. I will have to fill out certain information here. Um, and when the task is submitted, it, it will go to the right place. Of course, these tasks can be much more complex, like in this compression example, um, with lots of uh, rules about whether fields are mandatory or not. If I select one value here, then I get a, a you know another selector. So you can these templates are totally configurable in the workspace for what you want to do. Um, so that's just an interesting way to use use task templates. Um, the other thing I wanted to jump over to the the schedule. Um, so you can see that these tasks that I added earlier are here in the overall schedule as well. So this overall schedule is showing not just that project, but all, all projects um, that we have. So we can see the availability of everyone. Um, we've added some new um, customization here where you can select what your hours of interest are. So it collapses down the other hours. If you're in, just zoom in a little bit or click into today's view. If I'm in today's view, it's collapsing down the, the hours before that. Um, also Heidi weekends and that kind of stuff. Um, so you can have a the view that you need. Um, also, the, the, in the recent releases, uh, we have released this advanced search feature. So previously we had this simple search here where you could search um, for your tasks, but now uh, we've added this search and export feature. So I have some um, searches saved that I was doing earlier. So here I'm searching for um, any task where the assignee is Anna and the due date is, is in this month. So maybe I'll put that out a little bit more. We get some more tasks. Let's say, okay, and I search. And these, these are my results here. Uh, I can also search using the project condition. So not just the value on the task, but the value on the, the uh, containing project. So searching for here, searching for uh, tasks in projects which are active or I could be searching by the custom field on the, the project so if the project had some custom fields um, for a certain client I could search by tasks in that project and lots of options on on the what you can use to search for the tasks here um, the interesting thing about this the other interesting thing about this is you can also export this result to CSV so here on the Mac app it's this share symbol on iOS and uh, web I think it's a export to CSV. You have some options as to what your delimiter will be. If you're using Excel, uh, you need to select this other uh, format to get, get the right result. Um, and then I can export my tasks and that will, uh, that will give me a CSV like this one here, just a second. Uh, 
Um, and you can use the CSV as you want. It's The information is a little bit uh, blunt right now, um, but it, everything about the task is there. So you can take it to do other reporting uh, as you need. Um, similarly with bookings, you could export all the bookings um, in a certain time range uh, and use that export. Um, one thing about the bookings that we do is when you take the export, <coughs> excuse me, uh, when you take the export here, for example, all bookings between the 1st of August and the 31st of September, 30th of September. And when I export that, I'll also get a duration field in this case, which is um, giving me the duration in hours of all those bookings. So you can use that to sum up um, how your team have been booked. And in this case, uh, you see for each of the bookings, there is one line per event. So one line per assignee or per person involved or per event um, so you see there as well how maybe for reporting you may need to use bookings versus tasks and here's the event duration um, so I think that's it for the demo I'll jump back over to the slides so um, back in the slides uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the plan over the next um, little while for the, the, the product. So we're working at the moment, this is kind of what we've been working on this year, um, the search and export tool that you see, a lot around scheduling. And we've also, in for Farmer's Wife users, in Farmer's Wife 66 Service Pack 1, um, there was a project integration feature which you could uh, link your, your Farmer's Wife to Circus and then uh, sync your projects between both platforms. Um, not the tasks, but the project information, like the project name, the custom fields, etc. So a nice workflow there is to start a project out in Farmer's Wife. And when it gets to the like execution stage, maybe when it's approved or when it moves on, um, then you send the project to Circus to be created. It, those projects can be created with templates. So all the tasks are there for, for your creatives or for your engineers to work on. Um, and they just work in Circus, collaborating on the tasks. And then the... the um, the task information, I mean, the, the count of task information is sent back to Farmer's Wife. So also we have, um, what we're working on right now is subtasks. So um, now we have this kind of flat structure for tasks, but as we have subprojects and projects, we're looking at subtasks and tasks, and those subtasks will be full features. So they'll have their own statuses, their own assignees, they'll be able to have project temp or task templates, custom fields, all of that stuff. Um, so a big feature there. Um, milestones as well, looking at having these um, customized milestones on your projects where you can say when the important dates is, are and see those in the timeline. Uh, we're also looking at time reporting. And these are all standalone circus features. Also looking at time reporting. So as we've developed scheduling and looking at the reporting, we understand that we want to know not only when people and resources are booked, but also what actually happened. So um, time reporting is, is related to that. Excuse me. Um, also, um, we're looking in the next version of Farmer's Wife in 6.7. We're increasing um, the integration with Circus. So you will be able to link budget line items to tasks. So those uh, billable or chargeable items that you might have in your budget will be able to map to tasks in Circus, so you'll be able to send them over to be executed in Circus. So that's coming um, soon, and maybe we will have a, a follow-up webinar where we, we cover some of these specific integration points. Also, the, the big question we are often asked by Farmer's Wife clients is, when can I see my long form in Circus? Soon is the answer. We're um, working, we haven't started working on it yet, but we have always in mind um, that that's the goal. So we have a little bit to go yet and we'll start on that development um, later this year. I guess for next year, we have this this vision of having, um, you know, the, the, the users that are currently using the, the Farmer's Wife web and iOS apps would be using Circus, not only as a web and iOS app for Farmer's Wife, but also, you know, with collaboration um, that they will get in Circus and all of those features. So we're starting to think of those more as collaboration users and you know we do do need to do some development uh, to get there but that's kind of where we want to go also uh, the time reports that we might gather here in circus may need to be sent to farmer's wife as actuals so this uh, 
a bit of um, development we have in mind there. And also we're looking at doing some simple rates management in circus and maybe, I guess, some integration with Farmer's Wife. But certainly as standalone circus, um, we would like to do some simple rates management. So all to come in the near future uh, for next year. Uh, so just some information to wrap up if you want to get in touch. Um, you can get in touch with us at supportedcircus.com. You have myself and Joanna's emails there. As I said, we have these tutorial videos over on circus.com and I might just quickly show you what we have there. Um, so if I go to tutorials, um, we have specific videos for some of the features around collaboration, roles, um, the templates uh, covers all of the custom fields, um, task triggers I didn't cover today, but this is some logic for taking actions based on task conditions. Um, request workflow we talked about, which is uh, gathering information in that request portal. Scheduling, this is a new, a new video uh, related to the, the scheduling features that we have. Um, so all of those, you know, short videos, you know, less than a minute or a couple of minutes each just to look at the specific features. It's interesting when you have a bit of time. And we also have our previous webinar there. I guess this one will go up eventually. So I think I'll hand back to our real life Joanna, live Joanna, to um, let me know if you guys have any questions. If you want to post in the chat and we can, we can try to answer them. Thank you very much for your attendance today. And um, we hope to see you at a webinar soon.